Hi all, this is Skate, and I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. We're looking at the T-34-2, the Tier 8 Chinese medium tank. Except, for some reason, I've seen an influx of comments on the channel saying this is one of the worst stock grinds ever. I've also seen comments in the last week saying which gun, the 100mm or the 122mm, and many questions following said train of thought and path of thought. So what I'm going to do a little bit different is I'm going to share in this replay on this video footage of a tank which isn't fully equipped, isn't fully researched with modules and doesn't have much in terms of equipment or crew for that matter. This specific replay we're looking at right now has the stock tracks, we're using the 122mm and a whopping 79% crew, which means my reload is over 16 seconds. I don't even have a rammer yet. But here's the reason I went for the 122mm as my option. I've tried all three guns on this, but from the start I would recommend the 122mm. And even once you have the top gun unlocked, I would still recommend the 122. And the reason I'd recommend it is because A, it provides a very, very unique game style for a medium tank with a whopping great big gun like that. Also, you're only sacrificing around 200 DPM for that gun in comparison to using the 100mm. The gun depression is exactly the same, but the 122 also has a much quicker aim time. You're looking around a second for the aim time on this thing. That is damn impressive for an aim time. Another added benefit then is the HE. Now the HE is going to be very useful because you're going to come across a lot of light tanks when you're rolling up in a medium. Which means you can make a mess of them in terms of module damage, in terms of the initial alpha shot producing 500. Now when you're coming up against something like, oh, I don't know, an SP-1C and you are firing HE at them, 500 alpha in one shot is going to make a big old mess of it. There is a backhand, of course, and the backhand in my eyes is the penetration. 175 millimeters is not the greatest in terms of pen at tier 8. You're going to struggle frontly against ISs, and let's be fair, tier 8 is plagued with ISs. But to draw a comparative to the top 100 millimeter gun, millimeter, <laughs> millimeter, um, you've only got 181 pen on that anyway, so you're looking six more. Realistically, for the front of an IS, pointing directly at you, angling correctly, you're going to need to use the premium ammo on the 100 millimeter anyway. So at that point in time, you're actually in a better situation using the 122 again, because you're looking 250 millimeters of penetration on a heat with the top gun in comparison to 241 millimeters of penetration with APCR on the 100 millimeter. So is it a big sacrifice losing the 200 DPM per minute using the 100 millimeter? And is it a big sacrifice dropping out that six millimeters of penetration? No, not really. I think those two sacrifices are massively outweighed by the better aim time, the better, more reliable, more useful HE. And running this thing with a 100mm, it's just a pants type 59 at that point. It's just a bad one, if you want my honest opinion. Running it with a 122 provides and lends to a unique game style, a unique gameplay, a medium with a monster gun. And that is what I absolutely adored about this T-34-2. Um, that game, by the way, we did 3,569 damage. We got ourselves a first and well, 18,000 credits. But that's given me enough to then unlock a couple more modules, I believe. Let's have a look now. Um, I'm sure it was 79%. Hang on. <laughs> we'll get to the next screen and I'll be 100%. There. 79% crew. No equipment in the corner, we're just running provisions and consumables. And then if we go into this screen, flick across. Yeah, we need the top gun and we need the top tracks. But yeah, back onto the tank, the T-34-2. Running this thing with 122mm, you start to enjoy the unique gameplay it provides. And it's very fun 
taking huge chunks out of a tank and then getting back into cover and being in cover so long that your camera resets and you pop out and play another huge alpha chunk. The problem with this tank is it is absolutely riddled with faults. Example 1. Amarak is bad on this thing. Get the equipment as soon as you can to protect your Amarak because I have never been Amarak so many times in one tank. I've been Amarak I think about six times in this tank over about 130 games. Granted in these replays I'm showing you I didn't have the equipment. There's another one. <laughs> but I didn't have the equipment protecting my ammo rack. You need it in this tank. You need it badly in this tank. So get hold of one of them as soon as you can. This replay, by the way, I think we're actually running around 99% crew. So this is virtually the tank fully equipped. I wanted to make sure I included one because at least then it gives a more broader perspective on the tank. But you'll notice I'm still running the 122mm and I ran it throughout. Like I said earlier, I tried numerous games with all of the guns and I think this is the best of the bunch because of the extra things it offers and the fun gameplay. It's just the fact it's riddled with faults. I mean, hull, I don't think is very good personally. You look in 70mm of frontal hull armour, doesn't produce an awful amount of bounces but you can get lucky. Sides have only got 45 and the rear has only got 45. What that translates to is you can pen the hell out of this thing with HE with its own gun. So if you're rocking 122mm on one of these things, try and catch the side of an enemy one and you'll pen it with the HE. Your saving grace from that hull is the turret. Now the turret on this thing has 180mm on the front, 120 on the side and 60 on the rear. And it's all domed and angled, which means the front of this turret is very, very bouncy. That doesn't mean sit still in this tank, because next to the guns is fairly... Next to the guns? Next to the gun is fairly flat, which means if you sit still, tanks with good penetration values can zoom in on those spots and penetrate. So if you're wriggling around while hiding the hull, it's your best circumstance, best situation for this tank. Lastly, you'll notice any time anything gets near me and I'm in a situation where it relies on DPM, I am out of there. And the reason I'm out of there is because this tank is not frontline, unless you can weigh up the cost and sacrifice the hit points for the shot. Ideally, with it having subpar DPM, but having very nice alpha and having a very nice aim time, you want to be playing this thing at medium range. Because at medium range, you can seriously cause some harm. Because at medium range, you dictate when you pop out and something shoots at you. Against the Centurion, against the Panther, in fact against any medium tank really. If you're dictating the shots in terms of I'm going to pop and they're going to try and pop and take a shot at me, you're shaving 400 of their hit points and they're taking what, 160, 180, maybe 220? maybe even 260 of your hit points, you're winning the trade-off every single time by playing it at this sort of range. Probability has it that you will aim a damn sight faster than them as well. And I quite enjoyed this playstyle, especially with the aim time on that gun. And the alpha on the gun. I did enjoy those parts of this tank. I enjoyed it an awful lot. I think it's a very unique game style for a medium tank in Blitz. Aside from the ammo rack I mentioned and the poor hull and not the greatest mobility for a medium tank. The other thing that bugs me more than anything is that 175mm. I don't mind the poor DPM guys because you're trading that poor DPM for being able to play a tank with a cracking aim time and pulling off some very, very nice shots, and pulling off high alpha shots. But when your DPM, ah, only 200 less, but when your DPM is less, you are so heavily dependent on every single shot counting. Everyone needs to hit, every single one needs to damage. So from that perspective, because it's so reliant on it, and because there's so many other faults, 
I really think this thing needs a pen buff, so you can make each shot that much more reliable. And I think it's the same with the T-34-3 as well, and that's a premium tank. But nobody ever complains about it, because nobody's got it! <laughs> it was a great tank, and I don't think I've seen one on the battlefield since it came out in crates. I know they're out there, but they're very few and far between. So yeah, the pen buff I think would be important on this. I don't think it's going to get one, but I think it would make all the difference to this tank. Because although you don't have the DPM, every single shot counts. And every single shot is that little bit more reliable at that point. You miss a 160 alpha shot in a panther, who cares? Three seconds later, you're putting another shot out. Or even the Comet one tier down as well. Um, actually, the Panther's got 198 pen, hasn't it? So it's even got better pen lower tier. <laughs> and with extra DPM, comparison to this tier for tier, it's not as reliant on every single shot happening. Same with the Comet, even 148 millimeters of penetration on the Comet, yet it's a tier lower and it has a thousand more DPM and damn sight better mobility than this thing. Point I'm trying to get at, every shot counts in this. Every shot needs to count, so with all that said and done, I think a little bit of a pen buff won't harm this tank. This replay, by the way, um, we have 87% crew, we have a rammer fitted, and we have the equipment fitted for the protected modules to help the ammo rack. But yeah, this is going to be a master game, and we're on 87%. And I wanted to make sure, like I said, I included these, because people... I can't believe how many people have commented about how much they dislike this tank in its stock situation. Now, what I'm trying to do here is hide my hull, just popping the turret, or trying to hide as much as I can, while trying to fend off the flank. One other thing I think is worth noting, I have specified what, well, it's a medium range, medium tank, and it's one which you try and pop and trade your shot for their shot. If you can't keep them at a range which is safe, don't face hug. My best recommendation is side on side, because then the only thing they have to shoot at, because this tank is low, is the turret. Constantly back and forth in that scenario really will help produce some bounces and just give you that bit more time to get a reload. Either that or use dead tanks if they're available near you to hide as much of your tank as possible because you can pretty much guarantee every shot into the side of you is going to damage your ammo rack, which is really frustrating. You'll notice then I didn't waste any time trying to aim for the lower plate because I needed to get it to cover. I just loaded a heat and went straight through the top upper plate on that tank. And it's the same scenario here. I've now hidden enough to reload. And as he's run around the corner, I have enough alpha to finish him off. I don't have enough alpha for that guy though. <laughs> so was why I am out of there. No point hanging around. I'm not going to win that brawl in a close range scenario, which is why I'm popping down by here, hoping he comes out so I can make one alpha shot at him, and then get down this direction. But he's not falling for it, which is why I'm going to go up and squeeze one into the lower plate of the panther instead. But yeah, this tank's left me feeling a bit confused in all honesty, because I have enjoyed it. Genuinely, I've enjoyed playing the tank in terms of those big alphas on medium. And even though this tank has been in the game for a while now, people still don't expect that big alpha shot. Which means they're so used to see mediums doing less when things like that IS came rocking around the corner. He probably thought, I can afford one shot off him to finish him off. I didn't expect me to do that sort of alpha damage to him. You'd be surprised just how often that happens. So it gives you a bit of element of surprise as well with this gun. The other thing then is you're not getting used to a certain gun and then changing gun. You use the same gun throughout your grind. That way from early on you're starting to learn and you're starting to deal with the process and the playstyle of those big old long reloads and you get used to them. And if you can make a 16 second or 15 second or 14 second reload for you, when you're down to your 13 and a half it's only going to get better. Or rather you're only going to get better in this. This proto, by the way, is just looking for the shot on me, and as a result, this tank in front of him has managed to put shot after shot in. The second he doesn't look at us, though, means we can put one into him very quickly through his right boob. 
So basically, in every replay, I've tried to avoid a close range combat scenario. If I am stuck in that scenario, that's when I will try and get the side of a tank so they only have my turret to shoot at, which is my best chance of success in surviving. Would I keep this tank? Well, I actually really wanted to. But also, how much I enjoyed that playstyle, I found the damn thing frustrating. So although it's still in my garage, if I need room and rather than buying an extra slot, I'll probably just sell this off. Which is a shame when you think about it, because it does offer a nice, unique gameplay. Now I know it probably hasn't been the most exciting in terms of gameplay on this video, but I thought it was important to at least try and throw something out with some more towards stock footage of the tank. And I hope it was some use in some shape or form to some of you guys who may be going through this tank at the moment. Or tempted to and been put off by the things you've read and heard. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I genuinely hope you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye.